All That's right. what it was. Got it All right, I'm good now. Yep. I, I was I was recording the whole time when you were like figuring it out. Uh, oh, I hope I wasn't swearing too much. Well, you know, it would have been funny, but then I was like, at the moment, kind of. Passed. I honestly don't. Re- I honestly uh, it's going don't remember. On too long now. I, I mean, like, oh, yeah, you, that'd be you, a great start. You gave me an extra hour of of sinning, so that's your own fault. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, Look what I have. Did, wait, wait. Are we? It's so. It's. Oh my gosh. Am I, I supposed know. to like be like it's caffeine? Like, what am I supposed to be mad about? I I don't know. Just okay, okay, okay. Just want to make. I sure. got a drink. I, do, you, do you have anything? Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's see what you got. Got my ice water. 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 All right. It's delicious. Okay. <laughs> I, I honestly, one thing I want to make sure. I, so this is recording already ready to go on. Like essentially you're just going to upload this somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's funny. So now I don't know. I don't know what any of the ground rules are. Are there any rules? It's just like not really a free form. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Pretty you, much. Yeah. Pretty much. Do you like feel I like I said, a, compared to what you do, cause I know you put a lot of effort into your recordings and stuff where I'm just kind of like, um, I'm just going to, just upload it. <laughs> no, no, I mean, that's, yeah, that's like, about it. Once I figured out how to dual track, like, so the difficulty. Do you like more often than not do your podcast like this remote, so people on Zoom or whatever? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like so much more difficult when you do it that way. That's why most of uh, like most of the ones that I do now, I make sure that someone's in the room with me. Oh, okay. Because just running both microphones through an adapter into my computer and then dual tracking has saved me hours hours upon hours um like also i was like editing out like swears and stuff like that uh-huh oh, good golly it would take i'm not gonna edit out swears, so uh, that's all on you man hey i like that's why that's why like i don't know who listened to this i don't know who like the the well, audience i think, is, we, have, so I think like, we have about um four, three or four listeners so far so we got lots of room for growth okay well <laughs> hopefully i can hopefully i can bring in i don't know like i don't even know what i am and what's also interesting for those three or four people who are listening, they're probably like, so who the hell's this guy? Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, it's all, it's all uh, abyss people. So they all know you. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and then you just post it on YouTube. Do you like keep it? Is it hidden or is it just like, if somebody finds it cool, somebody but if can not, find it. Yep. Yep. So but you're not out there openly promoting it. No, I think what's going to happen is, you know, once we have millions and millions of viewers, they'll go back and see like the old stuff. Like, Oh cool. wow. This is like when they were so, uh, unprocessed and raw uh, raw yeah exactly. back when they were back when they were the bad boys yeah. <laughs> we're, no, I we're mean, so, so naughty like, with how we used to do our podcast <laughs> <laughs> so like uh um uh a lot of us have ambitions to write stuff because we have a bunch of ideas but um but then we don't want to put in the effort to writing stuff out so what type of stuff i don't know just uh, the type of stuff that we post with each other. Oh, okay. So kind of talking about like subjects of like, cause, well, cause that's what's like weird about the abyss and every, and then when, when the millions listen to this, what the abyss is, is just like a group where we all, uh, or we all like, it's like, it depends. I just came back. Like I, I, yeah. uh, you know, I fell away. I fell away for a little bit. You did bit. fall away. Yes. Went through, but, went through, I was offended. I was uh-huh, offended. Uh-huh. You know, that's how people who leave it's because they're offended. Uh, but then I started, but literally it was just right when I started my podcast and it was a pain in the ass to yeah. produce at that time. And then, um, stuff with work too, like good, good stuff with work. I got more busy. There's a lot going on. Then once you just kind of figure out how to do life, it like becomes easier. The, but, but sorry, the reason that I was asking about the, the writing thing is because the guy who I just did my last episode with does voices. Okay. Um, and, uh, I, I was just like, well, why don't you just start writing stories for all of these voices? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to do it. I'm like, I'll do it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Like, just send me all of the voices you have. So I know who all the characters are and I'll start writing down stuff. It might not be good. Like your voices are amazing. So I don't mm-hmm. know why, but that, that's why I asked why I was like, Hey, do you want to write for this guy? <laughs> yeah. So he has, uh, I'll have to listen to that then. So he has just, uh, like, is he doing them for a program or like a, um he it's he's just always he he had a yeah he wanted to do a podcast where he where he would do his stories Uh but what ended up happening was he kind of just didn't have time for it but he he just started randomly doing voices when he was on his mission and then started developing them more and more cool it's fun super awesome like i i love doing voices too so yeah it was like a match made in heaven he's just good at it i'm like i like doing voices in the sense of 
I, I like to dab like, so like on my podcast, anyone from the South or any, anyone who's conservative is <laughs> always, is always this voice. Like, I can't believe like, no, it's nothing crazy, but he's like really talented at it. I just dick around with it. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I, I, um, I listened to this one podcast uh, by John McWhorter called Lexicon Valley and it's like linguistic stuff. Um, and he talked once um, about how in cartoons and TV shows, a lot of times the grand, the grandparent figure in the show will have kind of a, that type of accent, like what you just did. And he was getting really? into like, okay, why is that? Uh, well, I, I think about they like- They do the um, hoity-toity South accent? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, okay, maybe not quite like that, but just kind of like a- All those people burning the flag. Like a, that, con- like a country <laughs> accent uh, type of thing. So- um, and maybe it was in the older shows, but uh, his explanation for it was like back when TV was kind of getting started and the tropes were being uh, brought out, uh, were being developed, that probably a lot of the older grandparents were more, had been more rural in the past and as America got more urbanized and grandma moved into the house, you know, living in the city, she had been living out in the country and I don't know, same. Seems like a good enough explanation for me. But. Remind me, like, so linguistics, I know that I always see your thing where, where you're, like, reading the Old Testament, New mm-hmm. Testament in Greek, right? Uh, was old, so, yeah, Old Greek Testament and in Latin. A Hebrew and then New Testament Hebrew. In Greek. It was Hebrew. Yeah. It was yeah. Hebrew. Yeah. Um, for the Old Testament. So is that, like, the, is that, like, your thing? Like, I know I, I, know I could of. read this all in the abyss, but, like, like, I know everyone has, like, their little introductions, but I haven't read them. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. That's all right. I figure you pick it up after a while. Um, yeah, that's kind of kind of my thing, I guess. Like, um, I, I guess my my big things are like um, philosophy, religion, and music are probably the big ones. Um, so, music I don't really talk about as much, although I do a little bit. But music I just kind of do, right? I just play the piano and. Uh, but uh, but yeah, then uh, with religion, yeah, it's like study of scriptures and ideas and uh, philosophy and religion overlap a lot. Um, okay. I ask about the linguistics linguistics specifically because I had a very specific question I was hoping you could answer. Sure. Is it true that the English accent as we know it today was developed after the revolution of the the United States of America? Is that pretty sure? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. I, I think so. So I, I know I, I've read a little bit about it. Um, Todd, no, no, no. Todd, Todd, you've spoken. I've spoken. You yeah. Don't, don't feel so, like you have to explain it. Todd knows this stuff, everybody. I do. I do. It's All really, three of so you. Like, uh, that, that what we think of today is the British accent was not what was really spoken in Britain. Um, and then it was the Boston accent that is more similar to the accent they had back in the day. I think I think it might be some, something I like. That, I honestly yeah. don't know where I'm pulling this but, out of. Uh, I'm just like. But like that soft Mark R, Wahlberg film, probably uh, that they have. Yeah, uh, what's like the Queen's English? Uh, that accent. It was not like what Shakespeare would have spoken, or uh, you know, the people before America, American colonization. That um, even even though in the movies, you know, it's always like the current British accent that you see, even if it's like in ancient Rome or something, it's always- Yeah, it's Maggie Smith. It's always, what, however Maggie Smith talk is how, is how all movies are done. And then- uh, I don't even know who Maggie Tim, Smith is. Tiny Tim, know Who's Maggie Smith? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> um, Maggie Smith, I'm trying to think, Hook. She's the old lady in Hook, Grandma in Hook. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I totally let me Let me is. just verify that really quick. I don't like, I'm, up, I'm 99% sure. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, Hook, what I Hook, love Hook, about Hook so is like right she's like 120 years old in Hook, which was like I don't know early 90s, I think. Yeah, it must have been early 90s because I remember I got action figures when I was. Wait, where'd you come up with that place. number? 120. She just looks really, really old. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, she just <laughs> okay. looks really, really old, Fair. and then like she in, looks the same um, now. <laughs> and then in Harry Potter, well, she's like younger now. She's no, she's in younger. Than, yeah, no, you're right. Oh, I mean, I'm Professor sure they made her look older in Hook, but. <laughs> No, so she should have been, so Hook was like 1991, so that should be 30 years ago, um, and I'm pretty sure she, I just had it up, let me check again, but pretty she's sure probably, she's 120 now. Yeah. No, she's 85, so she would have been 55 then, so mm-hmm. yeah, she def, they definitely they, made they her made look it, older. Yeah, they must her. have made her look older, because she's like the aging, you know, great-grandmother who's almost going to die in the movie, you know, but yeah, obviously, she was only in her 50s, so that wouldn't have been the case. 
Yeah, I think my favorite part of that is uh, when she tries to hook up with adult Peter. I think that that's a very overlooked scene in the movie. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, you mean as she like an starts old woman? to hold his yeah as an old woman yeah yeah as an old woman. There's a scene where I think did I just did I just watch this? I don't know why I know this, but um, she like goes to like goes in, holds his hand, and he's just like, "Whoa, Grandma, Grandma Wendy, let's calm down." I'm like. Yeah, they they really just gloss over that point that they okay, had a semi romantic a semi romantic relationship when they were kids, and now this homeboy is married to her granddaughter. Yeah, they, just, they don't even they don't even address that at all. That how is that not? It's like that would be weird. It's Cap, right? No, it's the equivalent of Captain America today with uh, Peggy. What's her name's like aunt or niece? Right. Or niece, right? Yeah, and yeah. then he goes back. And actually ends up having a life with her. How are you explaining that, Cap? How are you going to be like, hey, hooked up with your uh, soon-to-be niece. <laughs> uh, but don't worry, don't worry. It was in 2015. Uh, I was fighting against Sebastian Stan or whatever. Uh, so wait, Bucky Captain against- America was with, I, I, must, I, I don't know if I've seen all the movies. So he was with someone? Yeah, so he hooks up with, uh, I believe it's in Civil War. Because he's oh. on the run and she's kind of helping him out. Uh, ah. But it ends up being Peggy's niece. Oh, okay. I'll have to go back and watch that. One. At what At what point did you stop watching them, or have you watched all of I, them? No, I, I've I think I've seen most of the big ones now. But it was always like I, th- there were so many it was hard to keep up with, right? So um, I saw Avengers in theaters, uh, Age of Ultron. I still haven't seen. Um, and then I saw, I saw the last two in theaters. Um, but I only recently saw Ant-Man. Um, and uh, Civil War. And uh, You just Winter waited Soldier. for them to come out on Disney Plus? <laughs> you just... Yeah, I, I, I saw those on Netflix, I think, when they were on Netflix. Um, I didn't see them in theaters, so I didn't see them until a few years after. Um, Sorry, Disney. Didn't pay yeah. for them. I guess you kind of did with your five ninety nine subscription fee to Disney Plus, yeah, or, yeah. and or ten dollars to Netflix when all those used to be on Netflix. I got I got a Disney Plus subscription uh, for Christmas, a year long subscription. Oh, yeah. From who? Like from from your from your uh, wireless provider. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're Verizon. Uh, have uh, Disney Plus for a year. I don't know if it was them or T Mobile. It was some random. Oh, one were they doing that? I th- I th- think so like it was like right when it started but it was in november oh, okay. uh when whenever disney plus came out by yeah, the way I disney like, plus um, super overrated how about you start coming up with some new shows disney plus <laughs> you think disney plus is overrated it was cool for a second we got baby yoda and then we got a mediocre end to the rest of the mandalorian and then we got what's the and then they had like the clone wars mm-hmm. little the, the end of the series and i'm just like yeah well they don't I mean, I don't even really follow anything new that they have. I just watch their old stuff. Well, um, watch it while you can before it gets taken off because of all of its racist content. Oh, well, yeah. You got to go. You got to go quick. Got to go quick. They're, t- they're just taking it <laughs> all. To, they're taking to keep it up with it. <laughs> I, hate, I, hate, I hate even saying that because I don't even care. Like, what was it? It was um, Gone with the Wind that they took off of HBO oh, Max, I believe. I have that on like, DVD. Uh, I don't know if that's something you want to brag about, Todd. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so, I mean, I understand the... <laughs> On the two fronts, element. actually. Wait a second. Let me explain that comment. One, bragging that you have a DVD, first oh, off. Oh, okay. <laughs> bragging you have a DVD. Second, bragging that you have Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind. Come on. Come on. So, come on. yeah, no, no. Uh, so, like, um, I was reading, for book club, I was reading this book called Americana, which is a history of the U.S. economy. Um, and pretty interesting, but uh, it, a lot of it's basically just these uh, kind of vignettes of different periods in the development of the economy. And one of them is about the mu- movie industry. And so it, um, I found it really interesting. Like it talked about Snow White and how that was such a big deal to have a, a, a full length feature film that was animated. Uh, you know, that was a huge thing. Um, and then Gone with the Wind was also a big thing. Um, and you know, that's a, that's a monumental film. and um, uh, it was also discussed in uh, Ibram Kendi's book, uh, uh, Stamped from the Beginning, which is about a history of racism. Uh, and so, I, you know, I, I, I get all that, too. That I mean, there's a lot of stuff in Gone with the Wind that you look at today. It's like, okay, yeah, that's 
um, Unac- it's unacceptable. Yeah, right. I mean, I'll, I'll just go on the record for Todd. It's unacceptable. Un- unacceptable. Yeah, but um, but you know, it's 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 um, it's just a, an astounding and monumental film. Uh, it quite. That's the one that has like all the records, right? Like it's the highest. Yeah, record. yeah. For inflation or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I can't deny the 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 level of talent and craftsmanship that went into it. You know, just speaking as an amateur film watcher, but it was. The um, level of the level of craftsmanship for a movie made in 1930. <laughs> sure, sure, but I mean that's that's especially impressive. And and Snow yeah, White. No fair. So I don't know why I'm such a a, De- a Debbie Downer. You're, you're so sarcastic, like, right? <laughs> like stuff. Come on, come on. The 1930s film. It's not that good anymore. <laughs> but but you're right. For the time, it was amazing. No, exactly. It, it's and Snow White too. Like um, so, up until then, uh, animated films were just like little short clips that they would show before real films, right? Um, and there'd be like five minutes long or so. And then, then people go to theaters and it's, it's this full length feature film in color. Um, and the animation quality was far beyond what anyone has, had seen up until then. And people were leaving the theater in tears. It, they were so moved by it. You know, I don't, I don't oh, think wow. people have that effect today uh, from Snow White, but, uh, but you can imagine. Cause it was the first. Yeah, it was the first one. You know, you think uh, yeah. compared to anything that had gone before it. It was a huge deal. That's cr- that's insane. It's so it's so inspiring though to see how far we have come. Yeah. Like, and, and it goes to a, 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 just a redundant point that I hit over and over and over again. Where I'm just like, guys, like, yeah, we, let's let's keep being getting better. Let's keep being better people. But like, we are legitimately in the best time to ever live, uh-huh. like ever. Like, yeah. I, like I think th- I, I know that people have said this, but like, just think about the pandemic pandemic in 2010 like oh i sure hope that i sure hope my netflix dvd gets here so that i can right. watch this i sure hope they don't shut that down like like right. all of the we're at we're in a perfect time for bad things to be like bad random things to be happening i guess you could yeah. say because there's so much distraction and other opportunities for us but yeah. um uh, just just going back to the to the snow white point just we continually progress and everything gets better um and I, I don't know why we can't focus on that for growth. Like, I know that you have to find weaknesses to build up and find yeah. problems to fix, but I, I have never understood the, the human need to just linger on those negative things for mm-hmm. a really long time, which I know a lot of people probably say that I hold grudges and stuff like that. That's not accurate. Uh, that, I hold grudges against people who... Anyways, I don't have to go into it. It's it's a story about a friend that I I will probably never talk to again because he brought the wrong kind of cheese. It's almost like the uh, the the cream stripping story that they uh, yes yeah that uh, they tell Thomas Marsh. But it's a, yeah, but it's a little bit different because the, my friend was like, "Hey, so we're having them over for dinner. Anything that we can bring, please bring mozzarella cheese that you shred. Do not bring pre shredded mozzarella mm. cheese." Shows up with the pre shredded cheese. Why? Because it was on sale. Oh, and uh, I haven't gosh. talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, the fact that I can think of the one grudge that I hold, I think speaks pretty yeah. well for me. Yeah, you're such a forgiving person. That's, yeah. the only, that's the only thing. You can do anything. No, you can say anything. As long as you're not killing anyone in my family or doing anything too right. crazy. You're so your, your, gr- your grudges are very, very intense, uh, but focused, right? So like, uh, some people might have grudges that are like spread all over the place. Like, I can't even remember why I hate that person. But you're, you focus on one person who gets all of your ire. Um, and so everyone else is, you're just full of love. And, and more often than not, it has to do with food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, which is legitimate. totally understandable and justifiable. Because food is so important. One, it's one of the most important things in the world. But but like but at the same time, now, we're all yes, living in like a great time. So I already like, know, but you know, for the sake of people who are, are who are watching, um, can you explain why why having uh, mozzarella cheese that was not already shredded is such a big deal? Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit deeper than you expect me to go because I'm just a great guest, but. Uh-huh. Essentially, Todd. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> it, it, it really all. I lo- my favorite thing to do. It all stems back to this. My favorite thing to do in the world is stuff like this, where we're talking. That's, that's the reason I have a podcast. Like uh-huh. I just I enjoy having conversations with people. The best things in life, though, are a really, really well done meal with people that you care about. Mm-hmm. And so, this is going to sound stupid, but. 
I did not consider that to be a well done meal because we had something that wasn't properly executed. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that what the, I don't know if this is where the question was leading. Mozzarella cheese that is pre shredded, there's a, they, they'll sometimes refer to it as um, like sandpaper, I think. Like essentially, it's just sticky. They have to use things mm -hmm. to preserve it so it won't go bad. It tastes different, it melts different. Whereas a fresh block, it's just a different experience. It tastes different. It's the reason yeah. that when you have a Nepal, uh, like Neapolitano or however you say it, pizza, like at a, like a wood, I'm trying to think of how people who don't like food would, would get, like at a, anything made on a hot stone uh -huh. <laughs> type of pizza. That's the reason you like the hot stone pizza better Stoned is because pizza. it has even better mozzarella cheese than the shredded mozzarella cheese that you get at normal pizza places. Mm -hmm. It just tastes different. It's creamier. They're like, generally there'll be like milk that drops off of it or cream that drops off of it. Uh -huh. um, and then obviously with the block of cheese, you don't have that that droppage, <laughs> that, that, that droppage happened. Anyways, all of that to say, it ruined uh, my favorite experience yeah. with, with people, which is sitting around a meal that um, not necessarily, either we're sharing it or we've come together to create it together. And it's no longer special because mm -hmm. of just one little, one little thing. I, yeah. And once again, I understand that people are like, yeah, let's be more forgiving. I don't care about so many things in life and so many things that people do and say I think I can have this one little thing. It's not too much to ask. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just give me my block of cheese. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for explaining that for everyone else's benefit. So I didn't want to have to, you know, go into all that detail. Like, what, what's you your said favorite it, yeah. way? What's your way of favorite, like, favorite way of interacting with people? Um, well, this is becoming one because yeah. it's my only way, but I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, but other than that, probably like getting around a campfire or something. Yeah. Playing. Maybe somebody has a guitar. We're going to sing Take Me Home Country Roads by John Denver. Probably. Who knows? <laughs> but most likely. Yes. I got a, a, a couple of years ago, I got a gas uh, fire pit. Uh, just, just out so back. That we, um, it's portable. So we could do it in the front yard or backyard. But, oh. so. Marshmallows. Of course. Hershey chocolate. It's got to be Hershey. If it's yep. not Hershey, it's not yep. a. It's not a s'more. Yep. I'm yep. pretty sure that's their slogan now. Oh, it should be. I don't know. Not. I don't know what. What else do people use Hershey chocolate for besides melting into something else? <laughs> no one's just eating yeah. it. It's a raw material. And if you are, goods. stop eating it. It's not that good of chocolate. It's, yeah, it's, right. It has to be melted. <laughs> it's not done yet. Yeah. Got to be with something else. It's it's the equivalent of ketchup. <laughs> We so, don't like ketchup. We like French fries. Anyways. I've always said, for, for s'mores, I've always said schmore. I've added a little bit of a, a sh sound in there, which makes well, no I. sense. But, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. It's just how I've liked to do it. It's more fun to say schmore. This might be the last time we ever talk. Uh, this, is, this is a cheese. <laughs> this is a, is this is a shredded points? cheese type situation. Oh, my Got ourselves goodness. a, we'll just call that the, the, um, the schmores gate. Wait, you just you just do it for fun, like with your kids, or, uh, or is my, this like back from when you were when like you were from when I was a kid? Yeah. Okay. So my sisters do it too. Schmores. Some of them, anyway. Schmores. Schmores. You want to know? Is that a common thing? And the more I think about it, I feel like I, I might have know. said it. I've said it like that before. I thought it was, and I tried to like check with people. I was like, say, say, you know, this word when you when you make the graham crackers Smore. and the uh, the marshmallows and and the Hershey's and, but it seems like so far they've all looked at me weird when I said schmores, like that's, that makes no sense. <laughs> they all look at you weird because of how you describe it. Yeah. So, you know, the thing, like you just, <laughs> you describe it like Bill know, Cosby for, with the well, jello pudding that pop. Too. You know, the thing with the, with the chocolate and the marshmallow. <laughs> oh, what voice was that? Was that the same dude? Cosby, come on. Oh, that, that, that oh, like, okay. oh, jello pudding pops. The yes, stereotypical. Yes. The stereotypical Cosby, which I guess the stereotypical Cosby is actually have a drink, but talk to you later. <laughs> oh man! Too soon. <laughs> Wait, so, too soon? I hope he. I hope he dies in prison. Um, <laughs> is that too? Is that too hot? That's too a, hot for TV? That's pretty interesting. Edgy. Yeah, interesting thing. Like I don't, I, I, I don't intend to be edgy. Like it's not like you know, sometimes I feel like people who like describe themselves as edgy or say, I just say what I think. 
are like the worst people in the world. But then I say <laughs> something like that. And I'm like, I hope I don't come across like those people. Like, it's literally, I'm just saying the first thing that comes to my head. It's not like, it's not intentional. Like I want to cause up trouble. It's like, I say the thing that I go, yeah. that could cause trouble or yeah. that could like be weird. Right. Maybe I shouldn't say it like that. So you really do just say what you think, not, not for any purpose. It's just. Yeah. And that's like been, that's like one of like my biggest flaws, I think as a human, because it's essentially giving other people busy work because they have to kind of translate or understand what I'm trying to say. Like, I just said all these things. Now you need to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we get free not, access not an effective to way mind. of communication. Yeah. We get free access to your mind, whether we want it or not. Mm. That can be Which, kind of scary. That's bad, right? You know, like I don't want to be forcing anything on anybody. <laughs> if somebody doesn't want a thing, I don't want to yeah. put it upon them. It's like a pop-up window. It's like we didn't ask for this, but <laughs> hey, thanks, Todd. If I if I wasn't depressed before, if I wasn't depressed before this podcast, you have now successfully depressed me. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, Alex, what you're saying is your brain is like those annoying ads that everyone gets ad blockers for on the internet. Yes. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I think I am. I think we, we have to, we have to pay for services to block it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, like sometimes I think that too because like Jeff does the summoning to the abyss. That group. Uh, yes. Once again, that group that we all chat in. Yes. And I'm just like, I wonder who the pissed off people that are Alex is back. Because <laughs> like, like, like not pissed no, off, like not pissed stop. off, not pissed off, but like you know what I mean, like the oh. This, like, because just like, uh, so everybody knows the fun fact about the abyss is like, I barely, I was invited to it by, um, can I say names? Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. Jared, uh, by I Jared Peterson. Jared before, yeah. So. <laughs> Jared, Jared, not Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Like, he invited me, and I don't want to, like, hopefully, the, Jared won't care. Jared and I don't really have a relationship. <laughs> like, Jared and I have taught, like, he was my district leader, the last transfer of my mission in like my favorite area by the way and we interacted for a few hours in that mm -hmm. time like our, our district leader calls um in the lds faith they go on missions they have a hierarchy of leadership just so people can understand that um which is and then he invi all invited me is huge yeah and, and i don't yeah so i don't know really anybody in this group <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, and I'm just like, I'm sure people are happy. Like when I bounce, they're just like, okay, good. Finally, this guy who doesn't really have that many salient opinions has, has left. Uh, and then, and then I just like, I get that summons from Jeff. I'm like, you know what? I think I'm ready to come back. Let's try this and then, out. And then I come back. And I'm just like, all right. And here comes all of the, <laughs> all of the opinion diarrhea that no one really, really cares about. Not Cause that is like the hard all, thing. But... Well, no, the hard thing is if someone makes a point and like, it's the point that you're going to make, you're like, I want to add to this conversation somehow just say it again just say just, it again yeah so that's generally what i do and i feel like, <laughs> i feel bad for everybody that has to listen to my my half-baked dribble it's not fair it's not fair to them it's not fair to me <laughs> it's not fair to my <laughs> wife what are you talking about but um sorry i feel like we got way off track there yeah. i have no idea there's what really we're there's really about. there's really no track but um <laughs> well, no, but I like there to be like some continuity, you know, how like, okay. you know, like, so essentially we're at the part of the conversation where like you normally have, you're like, how did we get here again? Yes. True. True. So I feel like we were talking about something I wanted to continue to talk about, but then it was, it just has, has now passed. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably get back to it. That's okay. But, um, let's, uh, so, but let's talk about, uh, your mission and, uh, I've noticed you've been talking a lot about LDS issues and, uh, and all of that. So, uh, in, the, in the abyss specifically, I think yeah, it's because it's yeah. the only place I can do it. Honestly, uh, what? No, why is that? Uh, it's the only place I can do it where the immediate response won't be one of two things: where it won't be hate or love, uh, which sounds weird. <laughs> sounds weird. But let me just, uh, <laughs> let me explain that. Like in the abyss, it's not just going to be let's all pile on the church. Uh -huh, let's all right. pile on the church and talk shit about it. Mm -hmm. um, and it also won't be. Let's talk like let's avoid it because we love the church so much. Yeah, um, people okay, are willing it. to have the conversation there. Yeah, so I feel like it's a much safer place. I know I hate that. Or I'm more interesting, that, but, you could say. Like, like, yeah, uh, it's more interesting, and like there's a, a lot of nuance in how a lot of the people there view things. Uh, and when we're talking the church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, or the Mormons. Yeah. Um, yeah. For those of you who don't know, but it's 
I don't know. I think I still have so much that is from there. Like a, a realization that I had this week. And what sucks is like, you can't go back in time. And, and, I, and I can't fully blame the church for the actions that I've committed throughout my life. But like, you just like go through these realizations. You're like, oh, probably the reason that I believe that or said that thing is because of this belief that I got from the LDS church. Like mm -hmm. the big one that's been on my mind, obviously, is Second Nephi um, chapter 521, the curse that uh, God gives to the Lamanites and makes them look, makes them have dark skin right, right. <laughs> because they're wicked. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just like, oh, that's why I've always had like these microaggressions and like small, um, I mean, that's not the only reason. There's a lot of other things in my life, but uh, like living in a, an all white mm -hmm. town, like there's sure. a lot of other reasons, but like sure. having that ingrained in me. Um, and I remember, I think I mentioned this in the thing, but I, re I remember going on my mission and like reading that and being like, it's so funny that it's second Nephi, but because uh, there's two parts in second Nephi that I'm just like, Ugh. it's that, that scripture 521. And then the Joseph son of Joseph scripture where from the Isaiah chapters that have been retranslated. Um, mm -hmm. Those were things on my mission that I just remember going, people can see video, right? I just went like this guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yep. Not not too sure how I feel about those. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, like I know like how I always joke around, like uh, joke around with. Uh, I says I serve my, my mission in Mexico. I'm just like, all right, let's skip to that. Let's skip. Right. <laughs> let's skip uh, Nephi murdering Laban. Let's skip a lot of these things just mm. so we can get you baptized. I got mm -hmm. a quota to fill. Yeah, but um, yeah. anyways, uh, I find that a lot of those things I've like and like stuff that we talked about. Like I'm super judgmental. I'm a very judgmental person of of decisions that people make and do. Like I'm mm -hmm. very cognizant of that. And part of that is because, and, and you'll notice it's more often than not against members of the LDS faith. And it's generally like, you're not being Mormon enough. I remember how I lived when I, when I was a Mormon, how I believed Mormonism should be lived. You're not doing it right. Oh. So you're, you're a bad person. <laughs> you're a bad person. Like, so like, for example, like, I'm just like, I've, I'm finally getting over these things. Like, don't worry, guys, I'm getting through it. Uh, you know, uh -huh. slowly but surely I'm getting through it. But uh, like an example would be like the, I see two-piece bathing suits everywhere in utah i live in utah yeah and i just yeah. see two-piece bathing suits all the time I'm like well i know like 70 percent of these people are lds and it seems like this seems like people have forsaken my prophet gordon b hinckley and yeah. just gone against everything you have multiple piercings what are you doing right you don't yeah. watch larry king live what's wrong with you <laughs> that that is because i have noticed that's becoming more common uh two-piece bathing suits um uh, just among members of the church it doesn't seem like it says um Big and in the words of Jerry Seinfeld, not that there's anything wrong with that. No, there's anything wrong with that, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, don't, I don't care. It's, uh, yeah, it's just something I've noticed. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind at all. I right. hope my wife doesn't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> but you still have a reaction. I've also like, noticed the boys' suits are getting a lot smaller, too. Like, holy crap. Like, it's just I, like, oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, that uh, is... Like, I, shorts are, like, it's, I'm not even lying, right? That's accurate. That is kind of like, true, right? No, I, I actually... <laughs> No, I because uh, the, the board shorts don't seem to be as much of a thing anymore. Like uh, yeah, that was more like um, early two thousands, and now it's like I, I I wear a shorter swimsuit too. But uh, yeah, yeah. So mine mine like go just like right above the knee. But like I see dudes uh -huh. are just like I just don't have the confidence in myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To go like halfway up the thigh. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> oh, just, nothing to see. Nothing to see here, everybody. Nothing to see here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, and like, I also like, I, it kind of makes me mad too. Maybe it's just because of the amount of effect it has to, that like, that is like the thing that I think about the most is like the church and how it has impacted my life because it's, it's, it's that common trope that um, people say like, you leave the church, but you can't leave it alone. I'm just like, uh -huh. ah, well, first off, 23 years of my life were highly dedicated to it. Right. Two of those years were 100% dedicated to it forgive me like like th this is super hyperbolic and i n in no way want to say that this is a, f uh, a an accurate equivalency but like it's the equivalent of like someone who was molested being like that was one time get over it <laughs> like uh, no no i don't think they have to get over it like yeah i lived through this for 23 i know it's a much less significant thing i'm not i don't want to be too flippant about that but it's just like don't tell me after 23 years that I have to like get over this thing that I invested yeah. so much time in. Like, get the hell yeah. out. Get, 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 get out of here with that. Uh, yeah. But well, at the same time, identity, I hate that right? I care about it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big part of your personal history. 
of all of my like, history. Yeah. You know, like, yes. like the pioneer stock, like the original, mm-hmm. like the OG Mormons, the OG poor Mormons who got kicked out of Utah and had to go live in Arizona, who then got kicked out of Arizona and moved to California because they were poor and then had a nice little life up in Northern California. Like that's, uh-huh. that's like legitimately my story. The part of the pioneer story that they don't tell is that they also hated poor people and made them move. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason it's all still rich in alpine and every other and every other part of a major city in utah is that uh, where just you're move from, a, from just move uh, a little more south move a little more south you poor <laughs> you poor people yeah so my, my uh, you know i'm in arizona so i guess uh, we were a part of that too yeah sedona like that's i'm pretty sure that's where my dad was born and then they moved to southern california and then northern california okay or sedona is that that's arizona right I, that's a place is that a place? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, uh, I didn't know. Spencer W. Kimball was my dad's stake president. Was it Sedona or or Safford? Oh, like, Safford. That uh, sounds yeah. more. That sounds more <laughs> accurate. You know my you know my family history better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I looked into it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, thank so, you, thank you for doing that. Sedona's like a kind of a touristy place. It's very nice, but I'm I, I don't know of like a colonization that happened there. But Safford is super Mormon. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Then then the, that one. The, that, that, that one. <laughs> are there, but there's multiple like Mormon colonies in Arizona, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, Snowflake's yeah. another S one. Uh, but uh I just happened to uh President Kimball was in the Safford and Thatcher area. Oh, then yeah, it was absolutely that so, one. So That's that like the one. thing my dad brag used to brag about all the time. Uh-huh. No one cares, Dick. To... <laughs> 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 no, no one cares. It's uh, Spencer Kim- <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Wait, but but so isn't, you, that, isn't that kind of interesting thing? Like, sorry, you have another thing that you want to do, but like, it's so weird the hero worship we do. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. So weird. I wish I would have been a bishop at some point just so people were forced to like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, deference to an authority. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> sorry, what were you going to ask? It is pretty funny. Oh, and I was just going to ask, uh, uh, so you were in California. Is that where you live now? No, I live in Utah. I'm, a, I'm in Orem. We're about to move to Lehigh. Lehigh, one of, the, oh, okay. one of my favorite prophets. Okay. There's a Lehigh in Arizona, too. Kind of. There's a Lehigh in the Bible, too. But a bump. There you go. There you go. Just <laughs> throwing that out there for anyone who might consider looking into the name Lehigh. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> to deconvert yourself. <laughs> um. No, so, so, but California, dude, I loved it though. Like Mormonism in Northern California was awesome. Just the right amount of Mormons, uh-huh. uh, but you still like get that real world, kind of real world, because you're only living in a very white community in the area of Northern California. That like I'm which uh, city in California or what, what large city? So uh, for any of you who know U.S. history, if you've heard of the gold rush, uh, the gold rush happened in a place called uh, Coloma. Uh, El Dorado County. I live in a place called Placerville, just a couple minutes away from there. For you, those of you who know nice. the geography from your uh, fifth grade U.S. history class. Now, would that be San Francisco That's where I'm from. area? <laughs> Sorry, a long, a long way of saying like the foothills of uh, Northern California. Okay. <laughs> right between Tahoe and Sacramento. It's, uh, it's honestly like, oh, okay. if I could find a job and my wife could find a job that were similar, because it's not super expensive where I'm from to go back to. Um, I would go back there in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful. Air's clean. Kind of, it's not super dry. It's not dry uh-huh. like Utah is. You got trees all around you. Yeah. It's beautiful. What took you out to Utah? School. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll do uh, it. Honestly, I mean, once again, that's like, a, that's like the, the cheese story. That's like the cheese question. Uh-huh. Because what really took me out to Utah was breaking the law of chastity. <laughs> oh, okay. Because since I broke the law of chastity and was ex- subsequently expelled from BYU-Idaho, then went on my mission, came back, and since my brother and sister were no longer going to school at Idaho, I had no reason to go there. I applied to BYU, moved to Utah, and here we are. <laughs> All right. Very nice. <laughs> Life's interesting, man. Like, yeah. like, I, I, like the butterfly effect is semi-real. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so, uh, and your mission was, uh, so it was wh- what years? Uh, 2010 to 2012. Oh. So 10 year, 10 year anniversary of when I left is going to be on the 20th. 
after it was right after Inception came out. That was the last movie I saw before I went on my mission. And then the first movie I saw was Dark Knight Rises. Oh, You're nice. welcome, Christopher Nolan. Yes. You're welcome. Uh, is that Thank the last one? Yeah, that's the last one. Man. Um, wait, what, what, sorry. It's something that I want to like, because like think about you and your think about you and your spouse. Mm-hmm. But 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 think about and then kind of just start taking it back like the amount of things that had to occur so that you two could meet and then create these children mm-hmm. who are going to have this crazy, crazy lineage as well. Like uh, one thing that I want to make sure I get across on this point is as an agnostic, as an atheist, whatever the hell you want to label me as a heretic, if, if you will, like the likelihood of life once you are no longer LDS is so insane. Like the fact that I'm even alive gives me such a deep, rich appreciation for life, which I'm sure other people have as well. I don't want to make it sound like LDS people can't have an appreciation for life. It's not, it's not accurate at all, but the the millions of sperms, the, the, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about biology. Are there millions of eggs? (laughs) Uh, No, actually. I don't think so. (laughs) Honey, how many eggs are there? Like you, you like get one egg per period. (laughs) I, I think that's right. Two dudes, two dudes trying to figure out how, how the <laughs> eggs and the ovaries work. <laughs> I just know okay, that they work. Actually, do you want to do you want to hear something trippy? Yes. Okay. So think about. This. I mean, no, 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 Todd. You want to know what? No, I don't. Um, but like, so the ovaries. <laughs> no, no, no. No, go no ahead, this is go about ahead. ovaries. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, so ovaries have uh, all the eggs that they're going to have. Uh, you know, when when a baby girl develops. So when uh so if you think about a a mother and her granddaughter she's basically the egg that develops into her granddaughter is already in her body when she gives birth to the child right so like so say a woman um, gives birth to a girl that girl has eggs in her right and then those eggs are later on going to develop into the granddaughter of the mother Wait, 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 wait. Uh, it's, once again, this is more Alex doesn't understand biology. <laughs> you are born with all of the eggs that you'll have in your life? I believe so. Wow. I, I just, I just, I, I hope that there's a lot of people that listen to this someday and be like, wow, Alex is so, <laughs> Alex is so dumb. How did you not know that? I don't know. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't read up more on that. That's probably why we have so many problems against women in this world. Cause I don't know how many <laughs> I GD that just eggs that you have. <laughs> Wait, but do, do, but are you born? It's just like most women. It's like, yeah. So women have a range of 5,000 to 10. Once again, Todd is my, how many do they have? Because I didn't go through health class because I'm LDS. It now falls on Todd to teach me how the woman's body works. And how do boobs develop? What's a boob? What's the proper so, let's noun? Let's see. For this it. is from clevelandclinic.org. Oh, have you been looking at this all up? You don't even know this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew the first part. I was just, but I'm looking up the, the numbers. Uh, there are approximately one million eggs. By the time of puberty, only about three hundred thousand remain. Of these, three hundred to four hundred will be ovulated during a woman's reproductive lifetime. Damn. So the max, based on that the max a woman could have is 400 children. <laughs> I, know <that's> un- <laughs> well, I know that's unlikely, but right? Am it, I, am it I, also am I does wrong? take nine months, you know, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, back, in, back when Methuselah okay. was, was having sex with Rebecca, because, you know, everyone's name was Rebecca back then. Yes, yes. Like, so he was... Dude, that's nuts. He could have, right? Like, if... <laughs> right? So Methuselah could have, with his wife, used all of her eggs. And I, if he was I practicing so, polygamy... Probably. Yeah. He could have done it with like multiple women. That's yeah. how we populated yeah. the that's how we populated the that's earth. How so it all worked. That's how yeah. it all worked. Yeah. Dude, and then you start having uh d- I was gonna say doubles and triples, uh twins and triplets. <laughs> <laughs> You're just using those eggs up like this, man. It's yeah. like supply and demand. No, can, I uh, uh I actually um uh, this will make you feel good. I actually uh explained that thing. Thank you. <laughs> I explained that to my six year old daughter recently, and I think she got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep I'll wait for the part where I feel good <laughs> <laughs> I think she got it in the first try uh, <laughs> that's funny no because uh no my uh my uh wait my wait wait oh asks. so were you being sarcastic that I was gonna feel better yeah yeah oh okay you said <laughs> I was like I was expecting for you to like drop some knowledge on me and actually make me feel better but here we no, are sorry Sorry. That's funny. That's good. <laughs> well played. Well played, Todd. <laughs> now she asks me all kinds of questions. So um, 
and uh, yeah, just about science or uh, sometimes reproduction, and I basically answer at her level. Uh, but um, uh, but anyway, so that was one thing that I uh, talked about because, uh, and then she she goes to my um, my four year old daughter, and she's like, oh, "Did you know that you have all your eggs inside you right now?" <laughs> and then uh, my four year old's like, "Oh, that's weird." Start crying. And <laughs> well, yeah, because your four year old's probably thinking, like, why do I have chicken eggs inside? Yeah, me? exactly. The only <laughs> eggs that I'm familiar with. Right. And why do I have, why do I have 400 of them? <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's the ovulation thing. Why do I have 1 million of them inside? Right. Wait, so the eggs just go bad? Uh, yeah, We're, I guess so. That's sad. Like, does that happen with sperm? So, this is what's funny. Now we're going to start talking about like, the male's part. And we're going to find out Alex knows zero about male reproduction yeah. either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, most all of my all of my understanding about how reproduction occurs is from the TV show Big Mouth. So hey, thank you, uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, mom, for keeping me out of out of health class in high school because of religious beliefs. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've heard of that, but that's that's kind of uh, that still surprises me. Dude, like we were like looking back on it, and that's like something that I expressed in the abyss. Like we were we were t- like. TBM to the max, like okay. true, true believe in Mormons through and through. Like it was, we went to church every single Sunday. We judged the people who were like, you know, you can, you can, you can take a nice little swim. Don't worry. Uh-huh. It's Sunday. As long as you're with the family, like uh-huh. we frowned upon those people. Uh-huh. We took everything very, very, like we didn't watch any sports until Steve Young started playing football. And then as I like, to be fair to my like siblings, my siblings had it way worse than I had uh-huh. um, at being the youngest uh, of nine. Um, but like, we didn't watch anything. And then slowly those rules started to go away mm-hmm. as time went on, but yeah, 100% orthodoxy. Like you do okay. everything, you do everything that you're supposed to do. And like, that's why I say, I still have those like two piece bathing suit. No, yeah. that's not okay. That's a so signal that you're a tight, sinner. Sounds like. Yeah. Um, very, very. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that, that experience is kind of different from mine, but well, let me ask you this. Did you know, um, like about how much did you know about polygamy? Like, did you know about Joseph Smith? Not about Joseph Smith, but like uh, third grade, Mrs. Parsons, uh, third, fourth combination class. I remember like kind of bragging about the biography that I did on Brigham Young and the fact that he had multiple spouses. Now, looking yeah. back on that, I'm sure Mrs. Parsons is just like, please stop. Please <laughs> yeah. stop talking. <laughs> please so stop talking. Now. Brigham, <laughs> yeah, I knew about polygamy, but it was like the celebrated thing. And like as a kid, you don't know. Like you, all your thing is like, hey, a dude that has a bunch of wives, that's so awesome. And then like as you grow older and like you learn about sex and you learn about all these different things, you go, Oh, I understand. Yeah. I understand all of the all of the things that happened so that he could have 60 children. <laughs> yeah. So um like I was thinking about this a little bit ago, because every Memorial Day we go to the local cemetery in Mesa. And my family's been around in Arizona forever. Um, and so we have an ancestor buried there who had seven wives. And so like, for as long as I remember, uh, that was just something I knew about. And also that his sister was one of Joseph Smith's plural wives. Um, so I've known that since, since I was a kid, I guess, just because of that, um, that connection. So it, it, that is one thing that never really like um, shocked me. Um, uh, even the part of learning about Joseph Smith and all that. Um, but, uh, but, like, but like with that though, that's why my theory, like if the church ever wants a PR person who can tell them exactly what they have to do to keep their members and to keep like ex Mormons happy I'm your guy, you're the dude ready for hire. I will help you out with this. If they did that, like, don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to like speak too much about like what your religious belief is, like how I perceive it in the abyss, but you, you still go, yeah. um, you still participate in a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, but I think that would be made so much easier for everybody if they were just upfront about everything. None of this bullshit with the, with the, the, like the, the essays that they wrote, like just teach it, just yeah. F and teach it, teach it from a young age. And you want to know what, when you learn stuff from a young age, you just go, Oh, that's normal. I don't yeah. think Brigham Young banging a bunch of chicks was weird until I got back from my mission. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, and that was because of like a number of other things. When, like, I find out about Joseph Smith. I found out about the book. Later. Right. I found out about all these different things. And then like, that's the only reason. But if I knew all of these things beforehand, I'd just be like, yeah, whatever. Like I used to defend 
I used to defend polygamy very easily, like just yeah. general polygamy really easily. Just like, yeah, well, you know what the lie, what the lie answers were. It's just like, well, you know, like women are just more righteous. So they need to be like, mar- like there's just fewer men, fewer men. So they got to get married. <laughs> Now, like, what do you think I, about, I, like, if it were really that. voluntary polygamy, do you, do you think, do you have any issues with that? No, none at all. Like, I, I think, um, I think Utah just decriminalized, just decriminalized polygamy. Oh, okay. So, like, I don't think you can go and get legally and lawfully married. Like, you could lie about it, okay. I think. But you won't um, get But you uh, won't get prosecuted. arrested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, That's good. And I'm just like, yeah, like I have, I have zero problems with that. Uh, it's kind of like the slippery soap slope argument that people will use for things like gay marriage, though, where, where they'll be like, well, what's next? Are they gonna have, uh, are they gonna have sex with animals? No, they're not, because they're gonna have sex with whoever they want to have sex with. Um, my only concern <laughs> with like legalizing polygamy is that it could make it potentially easier to take advantage of young girls, but then at that point, it's breaking the law. Like if you're if you're having right. sex with a 14 year old and you're not legally like that's statutory rape. Right. So so I'm not as concerned about that, but, um, consenting adults can do whatever the fuck they want. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like like, like if if whatever, whatever you want to do, if it's weird, whatever, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, unless they want to be go for it. Like, I I honestly don't care. Like I'm a big, it's like how I feel about marijuana. It's how I feel about a lot of laws that like don't really impact other people. Mm -hmm. Um, why do we still have them? Like it, 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 it just ruins our society way more having a lot of these laws that we have. Now I'm not yeah. saying like you need a lawless society, but it, it Penn Jillette's big thing is he always says like, cause he's an atheist and people always think atheists have no moral compass. He's like, I have murdered and raped as many people as I want. And that's zero. <laughs> I, I think you'll find that most people don't want to do a lot of these things that are illegal. And then those who do want to do them, they can do it in a safer environment. Um, so like, for example, I'm just like anything victimless crime, just get rid of it. Yeah. Um, but for example, if you're stealing, yeah, you should go to jail. If you're murdering, yeah, you should probably go to jail. Like, quit being yeah. a dick, everybody. Why do we have to be such dicks to one another? Yeah. That goes for white collar crime too. Like, the yeah. thing that pisses me off about our justice system is like, you have somebody like a, a Bernie Madoff who's going to get X amount of, I think he actually got a lot of time, but just using him as an example, I'm sure he's in but a cushy prison. People like that, yeah. Some like him may, may have gotten. Yeah. It's just like, oh. Like, oh, you're only going to go to jail for, like, this Lori Laughlin thing. Like, I don't know. Like, oh, so max sentence would be 10 years, and she gets, like, a couple months because she strikes up a deal because she has a good lawyer. Then you have somebody, I just watched Just Mercy because is, is I'm that, woke, everybody. Is Lori Laughlin <laughs> is she um, Aunt Becky? Aunt Becky, yeah. Okay, yeah. You have, you have Aunt Becky over here who's going to only have to go to prison for 30 days for doing something super, uh, but at the same time, victimless crime. <laughs> Right. Also, yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, yeah. like I guess the, the, the argument could be made. Like, actually, I don't care. But, uh, but more, more of the, to the point that if you have people, if you have resources, you don't have to spend as much time in prison as you would if you had an ounce of marijuana on you it is a ridiculous thing to me. Um, but once again, victimless crime, maybe you could make the argument that those who weren't allowed to get in or get a scholarship or right, yet USC them. were screwed over, but like, Oh, I want to. I, I want to get to UCLA just mercy instead. Yeah, but uh, the reason I think she should have gotten the maximum sentence is because in like one of her emails, she had said, "I want my daughter to get into somewhere other than Arizona State." Oh, what a bitch! And I, <laughs> dude, I cannot believe Todd. So, that's so, when, when I heard that. I was so like, "Okay, sorry maximum sentence." <laughs> <laughs> this is. I'm, I'm, you want to know, and this is the problem with our jury system, everyone. Who is, all right, I'm taking over this podcast. Who's listening right now? <laughs> listen to, listen to Todd talk about how simply because he was offended because of Arizona State University. Like, these are the people who are going to be on your jury. That's right. You don't think they have prejudice? Yeah, my arbitrary judgment there. Yep. <laughs> I wish I could do Limbaugh's voice. I was trying to do, oh, oh. I can't do Limbaugh. You should work to be on that. That t- would be interesting. Yeah. Would it, would it Todd? <laughs> I, I would like it. It'd be interesting for me. Be it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, hope, I hope that when people, when, when uh, Jared listens to the first 15 minutes of this, I don't even think Jared listened to the podcast that I did that he was on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, if, he's like, because Jared's going to be the only one that listens to 15 minutes of this. And he's going to go, nothing here for me. Nothing here for me. To, <laughs> yeah, well, you want to know the truth, though, is that, so like, I, I actually don't tend to listen to um, podcasts that I'm on because I'm like, I was, I already heard it. I was there. 
I stopped listening to mine too. Did you? No. But you're do right. you have to do you edit them? They're like yeah. What, so I edit them, uh, but the way that I have it set up now is super easy. Oh, okay. Where all I have to do is skip to diff. Like I skip to minute thirty, make sure that the sound's still good. Skip to minute forty-five, yeah. make sure it's still hour, make sure it still sounds good. So I'll, I'll hear some of those points, but I stopped listening mainly because um, I like to be surprised when people like reach out to me about it. Like I like to be okay. like, oh, I don't remember saying that. Oh, that's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're just like, oh, interesting. And then sometimes pe- enough people will bring up the same thing that I uh, have to go back and listen to it to make sure it's like factual. And they'll that's be like, really, oh, yeah, yeah. You, guys, you guys are right. I, I should not have said that that way. Yeah, right, right. That's funny. No, that's, uh, that is uh, an interesting experience. And I've had that happen a lot of times where I've either, either said something or written something and then someone will bring it up and it's like, wow, that's like, that could have been a completely different person who said that, you know? And then it gets into this whole view that, you know, your identity is more like a wave, you know? Cause it's like, I'm not really the same person I was X number of years ago or even. And you shouldn't be. Oh, oh, totally. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. the bit like not, not saying that, that you were, were implying that like you should remain the same, but like people should change. Yes. Oh, totally agree. Totally agree. I love listening. I love, so I started the podcast two years ago. Uh, we want to talk about it. We want to talk about it now. Um, it's great. I started, the, started with, to check it uh, out. Um, two years ago, simply because I wanted to talk about Harry Potter. Uh-huh. Like that's literally the only reason I started it. And it's obviously oh. morphed into something completely different where I just talk about whatever stuff's going on and how I feel about it. I, I kind of okay. work out a lot of my demons and problems that I have. Um, crap, I totally forget where I'm going with this point, by the way. Oh, no, oh, no, no. I love, okay. I love listening back um, sometimes, not very often. It'll be very specific ones. I love listening back to him being like, wow, I don't agree with that at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't agree with that point that I made no less than... 14 months ago, like right. I, I have changed and that makes me really, really happy. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. I, I, I love I still that. That's, that's one of my favorite things. Alex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where did that like, guy go? The amount of vitriol that I had, like, I don't know why I'm bringing this up. I think it's just because that's like my biggest amount of bigotry in my entire life was Prop 8. I was 18 years old and I absolutely was like, ironically enough, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh-huh. like, just like, like, no, like, screw them. Like, they shouldn't, th- this is going to destroy the family. Right. It's going to be an epidemic uh, for, for uh, morality. Okay. And guess what's happened? Like, guess how wrong I was. Yeah. Like, how yeah. wrong I was about that thing. I'm so happy that I don't believe that anymore. Yeah. I'm so happy that I've changed. Mm-hmm. And all of you other Californian Mormons in 2008, don't pretend that you weren't there. I know, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> we were all there. We all heard it. We all heard we all the state conference. We all heard it in in, a, in just our regular wards. We heard the message loud and clear. <laughs> and so, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I guess we should mention that uh, Jared and I were on your podcast uh, for the masculinity one. Uh, That's one. right. Yeah, yeah, that was a super fun. Like, uh, what does it mean? I remember exactly. Yeah. So, what does it mean to be a man? Yeah. Yeah, how have no, you been was... doing with your uh, masculinity, by the way? Uh, you gotten gotten all that figured out? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, like who, who's ever going to have anything like 100% figured out? Um, I still, <laughs> just I, I've it, actually been way. doing a lot better with it. I don't know. I, you probably don't listen to my podcast. But uh, I did an episode with Sheila uh, just about all of our insecurities. Like, uh-huh. I was like, all right, Sheila, what I want us to do is just list off everything that we're insecure about. And I think that will I be- actually did listen to that one. Oh, you did? Okay. I did, yeah. I mean, uh, that was a while ago, though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't and remember I, it in detail, but, but I did listen to that one. It was so helpful for, like, because most of the things, if you listen to it, are, like, masculine, like, general masculine things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I thought that was, like, a really good exercise, and it was a good exercise in exorcising a lot of, like, Ooh. masculine demons that I have, because... There's like a lot of like, so this is going to sound so stupid, but I want to give some good content. I don't think I've ever shared this with anybody. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so in, in that podcast, I brought up that I have very, very small hands. And the reason that that gets brought up is because in 2016, everyone was making fun of Donald Trump's hands. Mm-hmm. And like, I was like, always like confused as to why that was like, 
Because as someone who yeah. aspires for political office in the future and to do uh, and to like help out um, society in different ways, I'm just like is that something that's going to be held against me? Yeah, like, am I missing when I run? Here? What? <laughs> yeah, no, no, like I run for mayor, people are going to be like, "Look at his short hands. He's only five foot eight. How can he lead this country?" <laughs> like, I do understand that people were trolling him. They were just trying to make him bring him back down to earth because he's like has an inflamed ego. But that's that's when that started. Like, I had this yeah. realization. Like, oh, I have really small hands, and then we did that podcast. I'm like, I just got to say this stuff, this stuff that I'm like, I'm, I, I'm a client facing person. I work with clients all the time. I shake hands oh, with them. Okay. And so like, I'm always like, and like some, one of my clients is six foot nine and has just a giant paw wow. of a hand. So every time I shake his hand, I'm just like, does he think that I'm less of a person? I'm less mm. intelligent because my hands are small. Um, <laughs> and so I just had to get rid of that, that thought process. Uh -huh. And it was super successful. Like I have no problem. Like, obviously we're talking about it right now, but right. The, the part about Donald Trump, like that's when it started. Like I just had that realization. Like, oh, oh, funny. Uh, I didn't know. Like, and, I, and another thing was like, I started judging myself on how I looked in suits. I'm like, maybe I should roll my sleeves up because my hands look a lot smaller if I have my cuff go all the way up ah. to my hand. And now I'm just like, whatever, man. Whatever. Like, if that's what people are going to make fun about me, so be it. So be it, Jedi. I, I, are you still, uh, is the podcast still going, going strong? How, how frequently do you yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just depends. Like, it literally is, we want to talk about it now. It's essentially whenever uh, me and another person want to talk about something. Uh, going well. Uh, <laughs> Got a sponsor making a little bit of money, oh, nice. not a crazy amount of money, but it pays for um, production costs, which okay. are nice. Uh, and production costs is just hosting it. Mm -hmm. um, right. And I'll probably be able to pay off my microphones and then I'll be able to buy better stuff when I move out of this apartment and have like an actual studio. So quality mm -hmm. is going to be even better. But no, it's going, I would say it's going well, honestly, like overall, uh, generally speaking, after like a few weeks, you'll we'll have like about a hundred listeners, which is great. Like, I generally joke around like to our dozens and dozens of listeners, uh -huh. which was how it was at the start. But just to anyone who's listening and like has hopes and dreams, like it takes time. Like I haven't did, sure. worked super hard on this, but there are a hundred people that listen to me, and that I've never thought that would ever be. Um, yeah, that's cool that would be there and like it's only going to grow like unless you know it's something super inflammatory yeah yeah so like that, that that's the thing though like um i know i know who like a majority of them are like i know i i can i think i can nail down probably like 30 to 40 of them who listen on a consistent basis uh, most of that's family uh, i have a big family but i can't account for the 60 others so that's cool yeah <laughs> you should you should uh you should try and find them see what they see what they're like Hopefully they're not all like super creepers. So weird. So this is like the really weird thing. I don't know if it's because I talk about controversial things or because I don't like maintain things very well, but people only reach out to me via direct message. It'll never be comments on any of like the, oh. we want to talk about it now pages it, or even like my own personal like Instagram or Facebook or, or whatever. Uh -huh. It's always, they reach out to me personally and generally speaking, they're like, uh, it's not generally speaking, 10% of the time, It'll be like, hey, can we meet up and talk about something? Like the point that you had, I want to talk about that more. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like, well, just come on the podcast. And most people decline. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, then I'll go and talk with them. Uh, I had a super awesome conversation with somebody um, about a divorce that they were going through. We just like made met up at a. I had a super awesome conversation with uh, this guy who had, uh, just came out or was about to come out to mm -hmm. his family. Um, just like a lot of fun stuff like that. I, I do like that I've been able to be a safe, and I'll say this to anyone. I will never judge you for a word that you say. I might correct it. I might say, I don't know if you can say it like that, um, et cetera. But like, I'm never going to think less of you for words that you say because I understand word vomit. I understand just throwing your ideas out there. Uh -huh. Anybody can talk to me about any single subject. Like, this is going to sound bad, but like, you, you could drop the N-bomb. You could drop the F-bomb. You could like oh, say yeah. things that are completely offensive. Yeah. But I'm never going to just be like, all right, I disown you now. Like, I'm going to figure out a way to, to see how like we can fix things. That sounds dumb. But that, that's the thing that I'm most proud of, yeah. uh, of the podcast so far is uh, a lot of people feel that way and come to me about like those difficult subjects to talk about, even if we haven't talked in years. Yeah. Um, I don't get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> i'd love to start no i'm just kidding. I'm, totally, I'm, totally, I'm totally just kidding but i love it like i love i love helping someone through 
a friendship crisis. I know I'm not perfect at it um, or anything like that, but it's just, it's what I want to, it's, it's what I want to do. So, so Alex, why did you study uh, advertising then? I also wanted to graduate with as little debt as possible. Um, is that what you do, by the way, is, is advertising? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a fun time. Love it. But I don't know. And that's the thing I love about the abyss. I know that like we have very strict membership guidelines, Oh yeah, <laughs> but like, but like, I, I barely, I, what I, no, I, bar- I, I, no, I'm just kidding. I was, I, I was, I, if I would have been at 18 hours of interacting with Jared, I wouldn't have got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, uh, I, I, what the thing I love about the abyss is, and I know that that, that, that except that one time, but, uh, you can talk about anything there and nobody is like actually judgy about it. Yeah. Um, you, you can just throw your ideas out there. I, I'm getting a little bit more experimental with like my language and then mm-hmm. also, um, just my way of phrasing stuff Mm -hmm. um, and how much I check stuff. But like, that's what I'm really, I I know I've only been back for like a couple of weeks, but I'm like, I'm really grateful for it because not only that, I noticed I've become smarter since I've gotten back to it. I'm forced to read so much. I'm forced to learn so much from you guys. And I'm also forced to be like a little bit higher. And I know I'm not smart, but I'm forced to be like a little bit higher in intelligence than I am. Just so I can. There's a bit of a hive mind, you know, we, uh, we upload part of our brains and share the processing power. What do you think? What do you think about? Um, uh, I don't know if you saw this message that I meant, but I was kind of starting to analyze uh, like everybody's style as far as like the the role that they play in the abyss. Oh, uh, and, like okay. I was I, equating I be... it to like um, to like war positions, and I was like, I'm a Gatling gun. I just fire at will and try, and and hopefully I hit a target. <laughs> and you have people, and Jared disagreed with me, but then you have people like Johnny and Jared, who I'm just like, they are so precise Targeted, with all yeah. of their points. They're the snipers. They're uh-huh. the snipers who are shooting people out of windows, uh, just hitting people. And then I was, and I was like, and then Jeff and Todd, they're the medics. They make sure that everyone feels safe. Everyone's healthy. Oh, yeah, that's no very one, true. No one's scared of anything. But when called upon, in a war, they're going to fight. <laughs> like, like, um, but anyways, like, I just have loved that. And I feel like I'm getting to know some other people pretty well in there too. Yeah. Um, I've really like, I don't think Mike was as active when I was back in the day. Um, Trevor, uh, I'm trying to forget another person, but like, there's a couple people that weren't as active, but like, uh-huh. they seem super active now. Yes. They're yeah. like great, great dudes. Super great yeah. dudes. Yeah. No, yeah. It's a lot of fun. I thought you were going to say, uh, so uh, a medic, I like that. that. That's very true, actually. I was, I, I was thinking comic also, but. Uh, in a war? Well, there's a, the role of comic? A, yeah, the yeah. The role of comic uh, I wasn't in a thinking war? in terms of war, but, you know, we'll, we'll make Follow it Follow my analogy. Uh, let's run with this. <laughs> let's run with this. Yeah, you got, you got to have a comic to, uh, to not take things too seriously. Oh, no, that doesn't work at all in war, so never mind. Well, no, I mean, that's, what, that's why I went with medic. Come on, like, why, are, okay. why are we trying to ruin my analogy? Never mind. I think I did an bit. okay job. <laughs> and then you got, uh, there's probably someone who's like a laser-guided missile. You don't use it too often, but when they come in, <laughs> you know, like I'm sure there's someone like that. Like that'd probably be like Pete, maybe. Pete seems like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's funny. I haven't I haven't accurately gotten to know other people well enough to give them the roles in our in our war that we are yeah. fighting against. Lack because of education. Because then once you express them, they're going to ossify, and we're going to really like dig into those roles that you give us. So. Jared, like one thing with Jared is I just I, I do I try to use reverse psychology on much as uh-huh. <laughs> much oh, nice. as possible nice. because I know he doesn't want to do anything like i was under him when he was district leader he can't be taking commands from me so um i'll I'll remember that next time i'll tell him that he's a gatling gun guy so that he accepts his sniper role (laughs) (laughs) he was your district leader you're a sniper jared (laughs) that sounded that sounded a little bit like hagrid but like no yeah you're you're a wizard harry (laughs) without the english accent yes (laughs) <laughs> wait why are you uh sorry, like and then anyone who does listen to this who's not in the abyss can be like how do i get in can i go there but it's but i like the the fact that it is as closed off as it is it's yes. closed off for a reason like you don't want yes. the wolf in sheep's clothing who's just like yeah i'm gonna have some compassionate conversation bro and then they take it off and it's just like all right i'm just gonna shit on everybody here yeah yeah um yeah. 
was no, trying to think of like a true. sexist. No. I was trying to think of a sexist thing to call Kayla. And I can't come up with anything. I'm like she's a she's a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know that's okay. My wife. My she's stitching up so, uh, flags. <laughs> Kayla, if you listen to this, totally joking. I don't think that at all. Like you, you're definitely you're like the GI Jane type. There you go. Uh, you're the you're the f- one of the few women <laughs> who has made it through the Navy SEALs. That's that's who you are. <laughs> and have stuck around. Sorry, you're gonna say something. Good save. And, and also, Todd, I could go on for hours, especially in the state that I'm at. So I just want to make sure you can feel free to, I can talk about anything. I can, like, all I, right, we're going to cut the, you off now. Because well, no, um, um, Todd, the problem, the problem with you, like the relation that you and I have, is the number of times where we've talked where there aren't like, uh, where there isn't a large group of people involved is negligible. So it's just like, think of, and this is going to sound super gay, and I hope it's not offensive that I say it that way, but it's almost like think of it as like the start of a relationship. Uh-huh. You're talking on the phone every single night for four hours. Yep. And then eventually you're not having con- like, so anytime that you interact with a person who can come up with ideas and talk about new random things, tell yes. their stories, you can talk for, for, for forever. We're, yep, <laughs> forever. Yep. Sorry. We're, uh, sorry. I get another the two minutes. in my stomach when I get texts from you. Uh, we're at that stage. So. <laughs> <laughs> no but i feel like you're gonna say something and i did the classic alex thing where i just go off on a diatribe for about three minutes plus hey that's all right um what what state are you in what uh utah oh, oh just that that it's uh <laughs> wait what state am i in oh yeah you said with the state that i'm in i could go on for hours oh gotcha 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 yeah. i i have uh imbibed a little ah okay yeah. this is not water <laughs> Wait, I thought you said I thought you said you're. Uh, oh, no, I got my water right here. Oh, I do have water. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, that's cool. And I just had my Coke Zero. So drinking's not cool, Todd. Nor smoking. <laughs> don't, don't. You know, okay, don't, you want to hear something funny? Is, don't um, teach the kids that. <laughs> no, I was. Uh, I was on a business trip, and I was with this guy from Russia, and he's like he's like my age, and um, he was drinking. Like we went out to dinner, and. Um, he was drinking, we got talking, and he was getting kind of, um, well, he was getting Violent? Drunk. No, 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 he was, he was cool. He was never Belligerent? violent. Okay. No, no, he was getting kind of drunk. But anyway, we got to talking about alcohol. So it was like this whole meta thing where it's like an alcoholic conversation about alcohol. And, um, and it, it came up that I'm, I'm uh, Mormon and don't drink. And, um, but, and I said uh, sincerely, it's like, but oh, but, you know, I, I don't. Think there's anything wrong with drinking you know, I, it's just something that i don't do as part of part of my religion and my culture uh but then he was like arguing against that he was like saying no drinking's horrible like here all this stuff that it does to you like so he's drunk arguing with me about how bad alcohol is i was like okay <laughs> sorry sorry I, sorry i didn't read the room better to know that the drunk guy is yeah. anti-alcohol right i apologize for that <laughs> yeah i don't who would have not wrong thought? Like, I'll be honest, he's yeah. not incorrect. Like, if I could have it my way, you would, I mean, I, I, I'm for decriminalization of a lot of drugs, but like, I would prefer marijuana mm-hmm. to, man, like, and there's sometimes I don't know how much to share because if I ever, like, I, like, I don't want to get arrested. I don't want to get, like, I don't want to not get a job at some point because, like, this guy admitted to this thing. But all I have to say, <laughs> all I have to say is that marijuana is a much better drug than Mm -hmm. alcohol like leaps and bounds Mm -hmm. above it and i don't know how else to express that but by just saying it that way yeah um all of that allegedly right yeah i i I recognize the the dangers of alcohol i recognize the negative impacts that it has on society overall but i also understand that when used within reason Mm -hmm. it is it is great for conversating Mm -hmm. honestly like all of my friends, just so you know, all you LES people, see, this is one of those things because this is, I'm technically breaking a law if I describe this. I get a little, I get a little, I, I make sure I take a little, a couple swigs <laughs> before I, before I uh, have dinner with you, <laughs> uh-huh. essentially uh-huh. is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it makes the, it makes the, it makes the night so much more fun. Like, and yeah. I know that a lot of people are like, well, you can have fun without drinking. Yeah, absolutely. But you can also have more fun drinking. <laughs> right, right. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I agree with that. People can have a, like, I know a lot of people who have been sober for their entire life who are super fun, awesome people. Yeah. And I know a the, lot the of The main reason, like, aren't fun. Like, um, 
if it were just like blank slate coming at it, like, okay, am I going to drink or not? The, the main thing that deters me from it uh, is just the risk of getting a DUI or something like that. Like that's the, that's the big one that scares me. Cause uh, and like, and I, and like, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I think more what you're speaking to is the risk of being drunk and like potentially taking someone's life, oh, well, getting yeah, in a car yeah, accident. You're like, you know what I mean? Like the DUI. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, super, super bad for, <laughs> for the rest of your life essentially. Yes. But, um, but yeah, no, that, that's 100% the, the fear behind it. Um, yeah. that's why I cannot wait to have my own home so I can start inviting people over. Like we'll have yeah. beds for people to stay in like all of that stuff. Cause right now, like at the light, at the spot in my life that I'm at as a 30 year old, no one has, no one has like guest rooms. A lot of people don't have guest rooms. So it makes it tough for that. And then, um, most people don't drink that I hang out with too. So it's mm -hmm. another difficulty, but man, I, it's, yeah, it's fun though. It's fun, but it's bad. Like I, yeah. like I recognize it. Like a, a friend of mine's, a friend of my, I'm trying to think of how to like, so they won't identify themselves. A friend of <laughs> mine's family member like died from, uh, from their kidney or not their kidney, oh. from their liver failing um, at a very young age. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so wow. it just goes to show you yeah. that uh, it is a terrible, and on that note, um, the next time that we have something that we want to talk about, we hope you give it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh man let's go back to talking about the abyss not something so <laughs> depressing turn there <laughs> but, uh, like, um, um it's it's dangerous drugs in general man so careful. i like what you were saying about how when you get together with people you don't hold their words against them um you know especially with extemporaneous speech i think that's really important because like i think okay yeah if somebody's writing an editorial page or something. Okay, obviously they've had a lot of ch chances to go over it and uh, parse their words carefully and all that. But um, when somebody's just talking, you got to give some leeway. Um, and um, it actually reminds, I always think yeah. of this verse in the Book of Mormon where it talks about um, taking advantage of someone because of his words um, in I think Second Nephi 9. Um, and digging a pit for somebody, you know, setting a trap for them. I, I Is this an Antichrist chapter? Um, Sounds like an Antichrist chapter. <laughs> and it, I, yeah, I have. Sorry, keep that. going. Like, I, I gotta check. I, I, I'm gonna check that out though. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's like talking about the future when uh, when people are gonna be misbehaving, right? So, uh, different things that they're doing, but that's one of them. It's like, uh, yeah, taking taking advantage and preparing uh, traps for people because of their words. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not about all that. I don't think that's, uh, that's good stuff. Um, the idea of uh, charitable interpretation, I think is a good one. Like, okay, uh, you know, if somebody says something, what's, what's a charitable way to interpret that? You know, what I've been saying, okay, that, let's take the worst possible interpretation of what this person said um, and, and go with that, which I think is kind of what we're inclined to do with people we don't like or people who are the groups that we don't like, right? And, and like, I, th I think that you would probably say this too, but like, uh, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm very cognizant with it. Like the intent, the intention behind something, you can feel that when somebody is talking. Yeah. So another story uh, surrounding the N word, um, we were doing a, a party, doesn't super matter. It was a family gathering. I had a good friend of mine there um, and a person, <laughs> a person drops the end bomb. Like, uh -huh. because we're like, we were making a joke. My brother's name is Nick. It's like, and like it, when I said this, it was not under the intention of trying to sound like the N word. Mm -hmm. I, I just said, Oh, Nick, er, like, mm -hmm. Oh, Nicker. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then someone's just like, whoa, that's a little bit too close. I'm like, yep, that's a little bit too close. Probably yeah. shouldn't have that be my yeah. brother's nickname. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then this other person comes in and goes, like, what? You mean it sounds too close to? Yeah. And I was like, my friend's here who doesn't know you. Yeah. And what you are legitimately intending to do right now 
is seem like it goes back to that that, that thought that I had where it's like these people who try to be edgy. Like uh-huh. what you're yeah. trying to be is edgy right now. Yeah. I'm um, more as opposed to where I've had conversations with people where they have said that word. And I know that though they should not say it, they do not mean it and are not using it yeah. in a way yeah. that this person was. And so that's right. like why I'm, why I'm so generous when it comes to conversating. And, and that's a really good example uh, of how I, I, I don't judge you. I had a conversation with this person afterwards when they did that. I was just like, listen, I get, I get what you're trying to do, yeah. but like, you have to understand that when you don't know people, you need to have some sort of a filter, um, like, yeah. whatever, like just common decency. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and like, so I, we had a conversation about it. I also don't really like that person because a lot of the actions that they do are stupid, <laughs> but yeah. um, that's a, just like a, a prime example uh, uh, of how we really shouldn't be judging. And like, I love that I'm toting myself right now. Like I'm such a good example of how yeah, you should exactly. be kind to people. Um, <laughs> but no, and like, and how you say it, like comparing it to the written word, well, the written word has been reviewed. It's not like people, unless it's a tweet, it's not like yeah. we should tweet, we should treat Twitter like we treat speaking because that's how Probably. people are using that yeah. medium. I think there are people who think about it, but for the most part, it's just people like, tweet send it off like trump says a lot of stupid stuff i know right. he's our president and i know that like we're embarrassed yeah. by how he does a lot of this stuff i hate trump i'm not voting for him. i take that back <laughs> i dislike trump i don't know him yeah. um i don't like a lot of the things that he's done but anyways i'm not voting for him i'm like P- dear everybody the yeah best way to get someone to shut up is to ignore them, <laughs> to ignore them. Yeah. i don't know how often i have to keep saying that <laughs> but good golly just treat people like him like a bully yeah <laughs> just ignore it and then eventually they're gonna move on to something else but yeah. uh, like but oh sorry all of that to say like i don't know why people care so much about like all these things well he's he's the leader of the free world this could like yeah. lead to world war three no it's not i promise yeah. you like the wars that we have are like bs wars just to like prove like some of us still have weapons and whatnot. Right. I, I, I am very convinced that humans have gotten to a point in our evolution. That's why you don't see too many new countries being formed regularly anymore. Uh-huh. Like we've gotten to a point where it's just like, yeah, yeah, war is, war is probably not the best way to go about things <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Anyways, I just got way off topic talking about freedom of speech and like how, how people communicate. Um, and I don't know... That's why I love the abyss, but I just don't understand why that discourse can't take place. It's all about, I hate the word virtue signaling and like calling people virtue signalers, but it's all about people making sure that they see me having this point of view. It's not the fact uh-huh. I have the point of view. Yeah. It's just that people know I have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, I guess there are two sides of it too, right? It, it, it's kind of related to what you were talking about of being edgy. Like um, there's, there's one side of like being forgiving and understanding of people, you know, when they maybe say something that's not really representative of who they are and being forgiving and understanding of that. But on the flip side, you should also try and be sensitive, read the room and uh, yes, be, be considerate of other people's feelings. So, uh, so it's not, it, it's more like uh, uh, that, that consideration is something you apply to other people, but for yourself, try and be sensitive. Uh, it, it, because unless, nobody it's a likes setting it. Where you can let your guard down a little bit. Yeah. Like, does uh, anybody like being attacked? Even Trump doesn't like being attacked. Anytime he gets attacked, he like yeah, freaks yeah. out, throws even more of a tantrum. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, even you people attacking him. You don't like when people attack you. Nobody right, likes it. Yeah. Yeah. Then what? Is there like a person that has ever said like, man, I, I, <laughs> like. I'm sure people have said this, but it's not true. Like, yeah, man, I just get so hard when people tell me that I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think there's a whole lot of people, unless no. it's Dorian Gray, that are, <laughs> <laughs> that enjoy enjoy stuff like that. Like, and and when people mean it is what I should say. Because, like, for example, I'm sure people have fetishes. I'm sure people have like weird fantasies that they wanna they wanna <laughs> go through, but when people really mean those things, like, like I remember Mrs. Parsons again. Um, going back to Mrs. Parsons, she had like the sticks and stones may break my word, may break my bones, but words hurt. Uh-huh. And I was just like, yeah, like I hate that. Like words can never hurt. And I was like, no, they, uh, yeah. yeah, they can. Because words they totally can. Are you hurt. kidding me? Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe not physically, but if uh, emotional impact and you want to know it, it could lead to physical impact. Right. Right. Um, like, I just wish we had a little bit more 
And I know that and like what's weird about it too is I know that I'm like a super flamboyant. Uh, I, I'm very energetic and passionate about things that I talk about. And sometimes that can come across that I know I'm 100% right and whatever you say is wrong. But like, I hope people don't feel that way whenever they have conversations with me just because, man, once we stop talking, that's what I'm scared about. Like not to get too serious again, but like, I'm, it's, it's the equivalent of like, you know, mom's mad when she doesn't say anything and just walks out of the room. I'm scared of when we get to a point where people just stop having discourse. And I know that's never going to come in a world of like 7 billion people. Like people are, are always going to be talking, but like Mm -hmm. when it gets to a point where a lot of people are just like, I don't want to share my opinion because I'm just going to get attacked, which I feel like a lot of people are in that situation right now. And it's only, I think it's only going to get worse still best time to live in like if if your worst problem is feeling bad when you say something and someone disagrees with it living in a pretty good world but i I, sure i feel like it's just going to get worse especially with social media and the the ease of communication that people are just going to like rendir say they're just going to give up yeah it's it's a kind of a unique or new problem to be solved right at the at the scale that we have it um with a global community um, and everybody being able to almost read each other's minds because we share our thoughts so readily. Um, on these, I platforms. want a world where the wor- where the abyss doesn't have to exist. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be ideal, right? Yeah. Like, imagine if the but, abyss was just Facebook. Like, I know that everyone. Yeah, yeah, that's an ideal. I, I understand, yeah. but like, that's that's what we're offering to one another is like legitimate free speech. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like legitimate. Like the the. the one hundred percent, one hundred percent pure. Just like anybody can say anything. Like because, and, and that's the thing. Like if someone came in and said, "Like I'm gonna go down and kill a bunch of people," what would we all do? We'd probably call that jurisdiction yeah. and be like, "No, no, no! Like that's not that's not cool." But we don't do that here. But that's when. But that's still first. Uh, first Amendment rights aren't protected when you're threatening someone, anyway. So right, I think right. we're good there. Anyways, uh, just all of that to say, like I I wish we had that level of discourse. There, but what's also been nice is like even during this time, I feel like there's been decent amount of communication between people, better than in past. Like, and when okay. I say this time, for anyone that's listening, the George, I'm specifically talking about Black Lives Black Lives uh-huh. Matter and George Floyd. Yeah, I'm not talking about coronavirus because that's just a shit show. Uh, <laughs> but I've been seeing I've been seeing a lot more people having pretty good conversations it still gets heated and you still have all those people yes. who are just like blue lives matter right. yeah uh, yeah <laughs> it's just like okay like no one said they didn't <laughs> yeah 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 i i've thought that too um i've i've noticed a little bit more things to be optimistic about um so you know there, there's like the global community where it's just random people who i don't know and i'm never going to meet where there's probably not a whole lot to talk about there but like within my neighborhood and in my ward with people who under normal circumstances I would see on a weekly basis. Um, I've been encouraged uh, by some of the interactions. Um, so, you know, I've kind of made it known a little bit here and there that I'm more liberal than most of the people in the ward, but not in a, in your face way, but in a friendly way. And it, it's been well received. And, um, and even though some of the some of the things that people post are kind of like okay that's not all that great that's kind of obnoxious but i just ignore those ones <laughs> but um in in the opportunities where i've seen to jump in and have some conversation it's it's been it's been good you know um and so i i am a little bit encouraged recently and i don't know there does seem to be something different and it, it's hard to know like why this time versus other times but um with the george floyd um uh, incident and then everything that's come after it, it seems like uh the response has been bigger and uh like it's 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 clicked for a lot of us in a way that it hasn't before for some reason i i, I don't know why um i mean woke almost seems like like the right word for it like more people are woke uh, or, or woke awaken by it uh um then have world war so. world war one baby you need the perfect you need the perfect mm-hmm. storm and situation the, the the assassination of france ferdinand mm-hmm. 
how unlikely like how unlikely that was and i don't want to like equate black lives matter to the great war like saying it's a bad thing but it was just the perfect combination of a number of different things Mm -hmm. i think um video yeah. All of us being cooped up in our houses for as long yeah. as feel yeah. legitimately feeling like our freedom has kind of been taken away from yeah, us. A I little wonder bit. if that's a big part of it too. Yeah. And just uh all of this existential angst as the United States States is entering its pubescence. Mm. Um, it seems like really good kingdoms, and I don't have any historical basis to back this up. It seems like really good kingdoms seem to last um maybe a thousand years. Like, a, like, like like somewhere between the 500 to 1,000 years. And so the United States sitting pretty right there at what? Is, what are we at? Like 250 years almost. Yeah. I feel like we're just kind of like becoming adults mm-hmm. in, in, in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And so um, we're just finally hitting it. Like, I, I hate to like sound, I hate to sound flippant again, but it's like our balls just dropped. Like, 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 <laughs> like, 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 like we're, we're re- like legitimately just kind of, voices cracking getting and all it. that stuff yeah, yeah yeah like we're just we're <laughs> finally starting to get, i would i would describe i would describe the voice cracking as the civil rights movement in the 1960s and then our balls oh, fully okay. dropping because you know you have to take it like a thousand years compared to a hundred year life uh-huh. obviously that's okay, a little bit smaller you. like so <laughs> <laughs> anyways but like it just seems like we've all we've all matured like i've been very Man, I should be this positive on my podcast. Yeah. I feel like I feel like because I'm a uh, I'm a guest, I feel more inclined to be positive and like I because I don't want to like sour, <laughs> I don't yeah. want to sour your yeah. podcast. But it's uh, I am I've been so amazed by the LDS reaction to it because okay. normally it's the LDS community that's doing all lives matters uh-huh. um, and whatever and like there's been a super vocal. Maybe maybe it was like a it was just like you know you have the the silent majority who just haven't hasn't been saying anything because they sure. don't want to rock the boat. They're all just talking now. They're yeah. all just they realize this is a huge error and they're not going to let these old timers and some of them aren't old timers. Some of them are young mm-hmm. and a lot of them are in the south and don't ha- associate with a lot of minorities I, oh, with a lot of people of color. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Words words are so dumb to me. Like I, I, like, <laughs> I like I had this I had this air quotes joke where it's like, oh, so it's the Game of Thrones version of colored people is what you want to be called. Oh. So in the Game of Thrones, you have the master of coin. You okay. have, you have uh, Jamie, son of X person. So it's like, all right, so we're just flipping it and making it people of color. Sounds good. Anyway, <laughs> just, just like little things here and there, just like, if it's going to make a difference, I'll do it. But right. um, I've been seeing just a, a ton of people really positively marching um yeah. donating doing stuff like that that i would have never anticipated yeah um just from past experience and that's been super enlightening and encouraging like you said because mm-hmm. man like i don't like it's weird right like it's so weird and i know I, this isn't an original opinion but I, it's just so weird that we're still killing innocent people <laughs> like on such a regular yes. basis yeah <laughs> as a human as as humans like i understand people who have psycho- psychopathy sociopathy and different things like that killing people because like the brain chemistry doesn't work but it's just yeah. insane to me that people who are like kind of normal which i would consider cops are pretty normal types of people just continue to yeah kill innocent people at such an alarming rate 75 percent of cop killings this was like a crazy stat to me i think someone shared it in the abyss i think it was you 75 percent of cop killings are of latinos and black people yeah. wow that's insane that's, yeah that's insane yeah. <laughs> and and, yeah. and latinos and blacks make up i think it was like 23 percent of the entire yeah. u.s population that's crazy that's crazy <laughs> yeah i mean that's and it's uh, I, I like the way you put it how that that should bother us more, right? Just any, any time a life is taken, um, that, that should be very, very disturbing. Like even, even if it's like, oh, well, you know, um, the cop had to do it or else uh, he would have been killed or somebody else would have been killed. You know, even, even in those instances, sad. it should still be very disturbing that that happened, right? And, um, and that w- we should maybe think about ways to change that could prevent that from happening or 
at the very least, just be disturbed by it, right? Um, I, I think it's a very human thing to be bothered by the death of another person. And uh, right. just I, taking that seriously is a good first step uh, toward anything. But if we, if we don't do that, if we try and explain it away or um, justify it for the purpose of not feeling that, um, that loss, then, that, then that's not so good. And I know that the most common thing that people say is like, well, just imagine if that was your daughter or if that was your son. It goes back to that point that we had in the abyss like the other day, or it might have been yesterday or today, but the point of just like, so who does the United States care the least about? They don't care about old people. They don't mm. care about criminals. They don't care about like, you know, like that, that list yeah, that we made. Yeah. Um, and and my point was just like we just don't care about people we don't know. <laughs> like, uh, like that's yeah. like that's probably like a better. And so if there's a high population of old people I don't know, well of course a lot of us don't like old people then. Yeah. But like, um, uh, how many criminals do I know? Not very many. Yeah. And the criminals that I do know, I still love. <laughs> like, and I, cause I, because like I kind of and when I say criminal, I want to make sure that like I explain like it's very stupid like dry ice bombs. <laughs> Like, like I'm talking about like stupid, stupid stuff. Like I still, I still love these people, even though they might've gone to juvie, they might've served like 30 days in prison or whatever. Um, Do people go to juvie for dry ice bombs? No. Oh, but okay. I'm just trying, I'm just trying oh, to, I'm just but, trying okay. to keep it anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to like, it, it's, it's a little bit more serious than dry okay, ice okay, bombs. <laughs> Uh, but like it's one of those things where like if i say it out loud people would be like oh that okay whatever yeah anyway anyway so anyways. yeah read between the lines uh, I, this is for... what i should have said they were caught with some marijuana that's not true oh. either but they were caught with some marijuana oh um, we just don't love people that we don't know and uh, and more, more often than not we don't love people that we do know right so, yeah <laughs> so yeah so good luck all of those people we don't know like there are legitimately people that all of us know that we don't give a damn about and yeah. are, aren't going to go out of our way to help out and do things. You think you person that, that has no familiarity with the other person, like you have a chance if they don't know who you are. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like that's all that's, I, I think that's what it comes down to. I'm not a psychologist. I, I have never done any studies or whatever, but just based on my knowledge, really the people that I care about the most are the people that I know. Like, yeah. Oh, so sure. I think that, yeah, that's natural. I, and also um, means that we can't really base the way we treat people on how much we like them, right? We have to have some type of principle in line that, okay, you know, I'm not going to kill people. I'm not going to steal. It has nothing, you know, separate that from whether I like the person or, or think they're great. Uh, we just have to have general principles in place. You're a dad. Um, uh-huh. It's always a good way to start off a question. <laughs> If your daughter killed someone, do you think you'd still love her? Yes. Like serious? Yeah. Yeah. That's always been an. That's always been like an interesting. Per, like I, I, once again, I know it's never going to happen, but like. The idea of conditional love. I think the only people who can love unconditionally are parents, for their children specifically. Uh huh. Because in conversations I've had with my mom, where I'm just like this sibling is dumb for this reason. This is dumb for this reason. <laughs> She's always just like, why? I just don't understand. Like, what, like, why yeah. can't you just like, uh, why can't you just like forgive them? Like, I don't know, mom, they weren't inside my body and I didn't create them. That <laughs> might be, that could potentially be why. Although then you have the adopted situation where it's like, well, they didn't create them. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of that just to say the conditional, unconditional love thing has been a really, really, really tough thing for me, especially mm -hmm. like during this time trying to actually love people who I don't know unconditionally is a, a really difficult thing for sure. me to do. Sure. Yeah. I, I've sure actually, I, I've considered that question. That's what, that's why I was able to answer so quickly. Um, so like, um, Oh, if, uh, what if it was your wife? <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was murdered is what I'm saying. Oh, like by one of my children or, Oh, <laughs> I actually hadn't considered that one. Um, I mean, obviously, you're welcome. Be, you're, I'd be very you're welcome. Alex bringing it down a level. I know, right? No, um, I mean, regardless of who the victim was, I mean, I'd be very, very upset about um, my, my <laughs> children doing something. I'd be, upset. I'd be very upset, everybody. Very about upset. The murder. <laughs> um, so, like, uh, understatement, understatement of the year. Understatement of the year, right? Um, so, that's funny. 
the reason the reason I thought about it is like, okay, I've seen situations where uh, a member of a family has done something really bad, and the parents will defend the child, uh, not not as in like, oh, we still love this person, but like, oh, they shouldn't go to prison or um, they shouldn't, you know, they've been treated unfairly. They're the real victim, right? Yeah. Um, and I would hope not to do that, right? Um, out of principle, I, I would want to say, no, if I, if, if I had a child who broke the law and did something horrible to somebody else, um, you know, I would have to recognize that it was a bad thing and that there are uh, penalties to be paid and, um, and uh, uh, recompense that needs to be done. Um, but that is something different from loving the child. And I, I think that can get confused yeah. sometimes, right? So sometimes they'll say, oh, well, if I, I love my child, so I don't want him to go to prison. Well, no, those, those don't have to be the same thing. You can still love the child, but recognize, well, you know, you got to you got to face uh, the penalty for what you did. Now, maybe you want um, a just sentence. So, you know, hopefully a few years other than the rest of their life or something. But um. it's, it, it, I've said this to my wife a couple of times. <laughs> just like, you know what? I'd still love you if you killed someone. Just depends on who you killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it all, it all, it really, really all comes down to that. That's why I added the caveat. Like, what if your daughter murdered your, murdered your wife? Because... That's where I feel like it changes because I'm always just like, Mom, what if I killed Dad? <laughs> <laughs> then you'd be like, all right, I don't love this guy anymore. What, what, <laughs> again, I know that it's hyperbolic and that it's never going to happen, but right. I'm just like, but that is a condition. Like, you're, you're, there is some condition that I could break potentially. Like, well, why are you going out of your way to break it? Like, I'm just trying to pr prove to you that unconditional love yeah. does not exist. Oh, so are you a, are you a uh, unconditional love skeptic? Well, like... I think unconditional love can exist if that condition is never broken. Uh -huh. And like, it might be one of those ignorant things like, oh, I yeah. didn't even know I had this condition. I do yeah. think that you can love someone through a lot of stupid things that they do. But yeah. I, I do think like, no, everyone like, but like, I, yeah, well, you know, there even, could be, even there that could serial be like, killer's mom was there. For what him. actually <laughs> happens versus what you, what you want to happen. Right. So like you could say, somebody could say, um, my goal is to love unconditionally um and that's like their goal but then when something actually happens just emotionally they're just not able to do it right um because i we all have goals that we're not able to keep um so i guess it's a uh, yeah it's not effectively it's not unconditional love uh since they're not I really knew, able to do it but i knew my parents loved me hopefully my mom and dad listen to this uh, I knew my mom and dad loved me when um, it was my ecclesiastical council. What the council of love? What are those normally called? Tribunal? Oh, uh, court of so like for disciplinary council. Oh, okay. So uh, my disciplinary council, I had like killed a couple people. No, I was kidding. <laughs> uh, like, my disciplinary council was at BYU Idaho for having uh, uh, for having sex. Oh, okay. Spoiler alert. Um, there, it came up. If, I don't know if anyone's listening to my explosion podcast. It came up because of her. She had like psychological problems. And by psychological problems, like bad things that happened in her past. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and like in my conversations with them, I was just like, yeah, I just like really cared about her. all those bad things that happened to her. I just wanted to help her get through those, help like kind of fix her. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I, I said that and the second counselor, POS, who I will never forgive for anything. What I don't, I think that you have the one person who's assigned as the person who's supposed to care, like your, uh, your advocate. And right, the yeah, the defense, are against you, the defense which, attorney. Which now makes me take a little bit of the love that I have for the person who is my advocate away because he was just playing his role. And it also takes a little bit of my hate away for the person who is playing their role. Anyways, okay, the, yeah. the, the, the non-advocate guy who's just like, yeah, it seems like you have predatorial tendencies. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Let me step this back a couple. This is with my parents in the goddamn room. Um, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, so from how you were describing things, it really comes across like you have predatorial tendencies. So if we don't address this now, you're going to hurt many other women like this. Hmm. Um, and my mom and dad both going, that's not accurate. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's not accurate at all. That's what I, I found out that... Um, 
I found out that they that they that they really loved and cared about me because I could smell and see through the yeah the ridiculousness of that statement. I was like, no, I was just a, I was a seventeen year old who just wanted to have sex with a nineteen year old. Why am I? Why am I getting? I'm the one. I'm the victim here. <laughs> like, if you want to get real about it, yeah, anyway, right. <laughs> um, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, um, but but just like uh, the. The amount of of love that was showed in such a a deep dark time like that helps me kind of understand uh, like where parents come from when when people are actually guilty of these things and, yes. and why they would would stand behind them is kind of what I'm saying. Like my parents were accurate in their response, but if they were inaccurate in their response, they would have still had the same response. Right. Yeah. Um, which probably doesn't speak too well for me trying to like plead my case that I'm I'm not that type of person. <laughs> I don't know. I believe you. Man, it was. Have you ever had a disciplinary council? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> it, it, like, I, mine wasn't even like mine was since I still I only had the ironic priesthood. Like I was just uh -huh. little baby Alex, yeah. so it was just uh, bishopric. Oh, okay. But man, that was like. It doesn't sound pleasant. Ah, uh, the emotional scars that come mm. from that. There are things you say that you can never take back, man. Oh. And then those things kind of, and I bet you that guy, here's what's, here's what's frustrating about it. I guarantee the guy who said that has not thought about that in years. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know there's probably people who are listening like, I remember every single disciplinary council. I've been on. <laughs> no, no, no. You remember like the serious ones, bro. You don't remember like these yeah. little ones where it's just like teenagers having sex with each other. Right. Yeah. Um, and he said that to me and he's doesn't think about it at all. Mm -hmm. Like he, he, he didn't have to. It. Yeah, I think about it not regularly, but every now and then I'm just like, I yeah, have to live yeah. with this for forever. And like for forever that somebody legitimately thought that mm. about me. And yeah. it just bothers me. Yeah. I get to I get to stay stick with it. Yeah. Cool. I think I've got a I think I'm gonna sign this is awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um I normally go to bed around eight, so it's a little you bit really? later than yeah, my wife and I get in bed by eight and like try to fall asleep by nine. Nice. Um, good for you. So, it's 9.08 p.m., anyone who's listening. But this is, like, is there a reason? How many people do you get normally do this with? Is it usually just, like, one-on-one? -on -one? I guess I could watch the YouTube channel. I've done one on one except for – there was one I did with two people. Um, and that was fun. Uh, but, yeah, all the other ones have been with uh, one person. Yeah. I'll go check yeah. them out. How many have you done? Let's see. Uh, or, like, an this estimate. Is the, Does, this is the – yeah. The fifth one. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing it for? Not just a month or so. I don't know. <laughs> or so? Oh, wow. That's all. No, the reason I had like that's five in a month. That's quite a few. Like I, 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 I barely can do one or two in a month. Yeah. But no, no like, I, I, I have no like expectations of how, of how many. Yeah. Yeah. I just like just doing something for fun. So, <laughs> Yeah. No, I hope I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, you could have yeah. spent more time talking with your daughters. I hope that this is effective for somebody at some point it might not be today or tomorrow but i hope that somebody but someday something out of this. Uh, and if not i know that i did uh, it's just good to, to chat sometimes it was great yeah very cool well i'll talk to you later have a good night okay. see you todd have a good night let's see ya